City Council meeting of April 15th, 2019. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our ceremonial matters have both been put over. Um, they, one, uh, we have a, um, a recipient who is not feeling well, and the other is a change in a recipient's schedule. So we move forward. Do we have a roll call? Oh, the roll, we didn't do the roll <laughs> call, sorry. Yes, thank you. Um, Council Member Barnes, would he be returning? And Council Member Moss is absent. Is excused. Council Member Pelch. Here. Vice Mayor McQuaid. Here. Mayor Nason. Here. So um, the council held a closed session, and uh, I have a report from the closed session. The um, the subject of the closed session was. Um, let me pull this up. Conference with legal counsel to discuss significant exposure to litigation pursuant to government code section 54956.92, California Voting Rights Act. And um, the council has taken action to include a letter as part of a future city council agenda item to state legislators requesting support for legislation to provide more flexibility for alternative voting methods under the California Voting Rights Act. Uh, we move to the consent calendar. Consent calendar items are considered to be routine by the city council and will be enacted by one motion. By approval of the consent calendar, the staff recommendations will be adopted unless otherwise modified by the city council. There will be no separate discussion on these items unless a council member or a member of the audience requests removal of the items from the consent calendar. Does any member of the council wish to pull an item from the consent calendar? Five, five. Any others? No? Okay. Um, and I'm going to pull uh, five, four. So why don't we start with, uh, with five, four? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, does any member of the audience wish to pull an item from the consent calendar? Seeing none? I have a speaker card for 5-5. Five five. You have a speaker card for 5-5, five five. okay. Um, f on 5-4, uh, the question, my question is this, uh, perhaps uh, can Heather join us? I don't think we need a presentation on this. This is the hiring of an auditor. And uh, my question is simply this, it, it, um, it's currently mid-April mm -hmm. and um, we will have our opening balances in June and that the auditor that we are hiring indicates that with the schedule and so forth, we will still make our December 15th target date. Yes. Uh, so my only question, I just feel of course, we have great faith in in you um, and in our uh, our new uh, staff and new system and and our audit our uh, outside help accounting help that we're getting. Um, but I'm hoping that between now and June, we can get we can continue to get um, updates to assure us that things are remaining on track, so we don't reach June and get a bad surprise that, you know, something was found or whatever. Can you do that for us, Heather? We can definitely keep the communication open. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. That's all I, I, I had. Okay, let's go to 5-5. Five five. Can we have a staff report, please? 
report? Are I you think my question's um, brief enough that we don't really need a staff report. Uh, we received a lot of comments at the first reading to include minimum pricing and packaging. So I would suggest the council direct the city attorney to draft language for change in the ordinance as soon as possible. Okay, and you say we have a public comment card? Correct. Irene? Hi. <clears throat> Good evening, my name is Irene Nicka and I'm the grassroots manager for the American Cancer Society Cancer Action Network. I'm also an Albany resident and a graduate of Albany High and a graduate of Albany Middle School. So as, um, I'll give you my whole resume, but that would bore you. <laughs> so um, I've spoke to the council before about um, my personal concerns and my organization's concerns about um, flavored tobacco and you have um, graciously taken on this um, issue and you've drafted an ordinance and, and that's great and, and we applaud you. Um, though there are still a few things that um, we find that are very important that aren't included um, as um, Peggy McQuaid just mentioned, which is um, basically um, the price and the size, package size. And those are really important um, issues, as it may not seem important, but um, if you take make packages small and make them um, affordable to children, to youth, they're going to find a way to buy them, to smoke them, and it will not really cure the problem. As many people from my age group, you know, there are people who want young people who wanted to buy alcohol and they'd find someone of, of age to go buy them alcohol and they had that, you know, this is, a, this is within their, in their budget. So it's very important to include these things. I know it's, you're not going to address this tonight, but I just want to really um, make clear why that's important and why we find that important. And I've already talked to you um, about flavors and the importance of getting rid of flavors and you're addressing that. So I just wanted to, to you know, talk to you and let you know that package size matters and prices matter. So if you can, you know, take that into consideration, that would be great. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other comments? Okay, then um, would you like to make a motion on this particular on five? five? Yep. You know, I think where we left this was that we, all right, I'm, I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. You know what, never mind. Okay. I'll withdraw my comment. Okay, do you want to uh, make this as a single motion um, on item 5-5? Five, five? Um, let me try this and see if you like this. Okay. I'll move we adopt the consent calendar with, with the change to item 5-5 five five that we give um, the city attorney direction to draft language for a change for minimum pricing and size as soon as possible. Does that work for you, Craig? Uh, That's the will of the council, okay. sure. You, you, you phrase it as a change, but uh, do you mean an, an addition? Because we're not, I, I right. just don't want people right. to get confused. We're not changing the second reading. Right, I'm sorry. Okay. So yeah. to. Yeah, I think it, it would be to um, uh, approve. You might want to have a separate motion on this particular item, but okay. to approve the uh, second reading for adoption of the ordinance uh, prohibiting sale of flavored tobacco products and to give direction to the city attorney to move forward with drafting amendments as soon as possible regarding the minimum packaging and uh, pricing. Okay, so you want a, a first vote for the whole consent calendar and then the second vote for the, the change? I think it's the other way. Be cleaner for the record if you vote on the rest of the consent calendar than a separate motion on this okay. particular item. Okay, now here's my question, I'm sorry. Can we do this without having this item have been agendized? I think you can because that was a topic of discussion at the last meeting. And what I took away from the discussion at the last meeting when the council did approve the first reading ordinance was that the issue of uh, uh, minimum package sizes and minimum pricing was something that uh, you, you wanted to bring forward in the future, but it, it, the, the only tweak here is that it, it's uh, 
given a higher priority to move forward. Right. The, I think the idea was that we wanted to hold off to see if the state legislator was going to move in a preemptive way. Did anyone do that checking? Uh, they're not, as far as I know. No, that, that was kind of my takeaway from the last meeting was that I thought the council was not um, wanting to move forward in the short term on that issue, but it sounds like this might be a change. Okay. Yeah, I'm fine with this change as long as we don't need to agendize it. And it's, okay, it's within so the scope of the agenda, because this was part of the discussion at the last meeting was the proposed changes. It was discussed in the staff report and the testimony and the council deliberations. Okay, is there any reason we can't do 5-5 five five first so that we have all this discussion kind of in one place on the record? Okay. So then, I'll move approval of item 5-5 five five with the suggestion that we direct the city attorney to draft language to update update the ordinance. Does that work for you, update? No. no. What uh, do you, amend. Amend. No. Or um, addition, an addition. Uh, <laughs> <Isn't it? laughs> you, you're, you're, I think you're um, moving the ordinance, the second reading of the ordinance and directing staff to work as soon as possible on minimum package size and price. Is that your motion? motion. I'll second it. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is, this is Peggy's okay, let's motion. Make it that was your motion. I'll yes. second it. Okay. All right. Very good. Let's have a roll call. I'm sorry. And the city attorney is, finds this acceptable. If, if that's the direction from the council, I'll follow Okay. That. Any final comments before we vote? Okay, let's have a roll call. Councilmember Barnes? Yes. Councilmember Pilch? Yes. Vice Mayor McQuay? Yes. Mayor Nason? Yes. And, and I will move the rest of the consent calendar. And I'll second. Councilmember Barnes? Yes. Councilmember Pilch? Yes. Vice Mayor McQuay? Yes. Mayor Nason? Yes. And the motion carries. Thank you. So we move on to the good of the city. Um, this is for persons desiring to address the city council on an item that is not on the agenda. Please note that city policy limits each speaker to three minutes. The Brown Act limits the council's ability to take or discuss items that are not on the agenda. So such items are normally referred to staff for comment or to a future agenda. Uh, do we have any speaker cards for uh, good of the city? Susan Schwartz. Good evening. I'm Susan Schwartz, head of Friends of Five Creeks, an all-volunteer 23-year-old group working on creeks in the city of Albany and beyond. I think you all know that a discharge of the surfactant foam routinely used to fight both urban and wildland fires kill large numbers of trout and other fish in Codonesis Creek. Our count of individual fish bodies is just over 100 and we can't reach a lot of the creek. We're hoping that the city of Albany will join in investigating this incident in an effort to find better practices that may be important statewide. We're going to have fires, more of them with global warming. We will use this chemical. Human life has to come first. Nevertheless, tw 20 years ago, our efforts following a major ebb mud discharge in Dakotanesis Creek led to a change in their practices that continues today with no complaints from anyone. As we look more into the details of the response to this, it begins to look pretty ragged Fire started about at 10 a.m. Berkeley didn't inform its toxics division. They said till 3 p.m. Um, we don't, no one seems to have uh, really thought about the creek until someone, we think it's a citizen, reported the suds. We're not sure about that. Berkeley informed Albany, but Albany's people were mostly away. It didn't respond. Uh, sometime late in the day, or very late in the day, because I have a picture uh, earlier, um, some one strong one little boom across the creek, uh, more than a mile downstream from the discharge with masses of foam upstream and downstream from it. But this surfactant immediately dis dissolves into the water column. The fish were dead by that time. This was really an ineffectual waste of time. Um, 
I, we don't want punishment or, or blame. We want serious attempts to find better practices that will let the fire department, of course, do what it needs to do. Um, and, and nevertheless, statewide could really lead to protection of wildlife and to the fish, the place that you, that Albany has put so much effort into. And if the trout really are all dead, of course, in due course, it's about three years from now, we would like your support in replanting the creek. We hope that is not necessary. Thank you. Thank you. Um, on this item, on this subject, I'm going to ask um, our staff to report at the next meeting because not all of the facts stated were in accordance with my understanding, in particular the, the notion that Albany was unavailable and did not act. Uh, I'm not, I don't think that's correct. Uh, so we'll, we'll have a report um, on this and other matters involving Cornices Creek. Do we have other comments? Alan? Uh, Alan Maris, um, Albany resident and member of um, Diverse Housing Working Group. And I've, I've come to thank you for the progress made on the providing affordable housing in Albany. Um, satellite Affordable Housing has a concept plan, I believe. And um, hopefully in the next month, the public will have an opportunity to look at that concept plan offer suggestions, and hopefully by the end of the year, we'll have a plan for affordable housing, which can be submitted to financing groups as well as to um, contractors for construction of affordable housing in Albany. I also serve on a resource center at the Senior Center, which recommends or refers um, homeless people to housing, and there's so little housing and it's just not affordable, so this is a critical thing for our citizens in Albany. So thank you for your efforts so far. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other speakers under Good of the City? Seeing none, uh, we will move on to council member reports on uh, state, regional, local meetings attended and announcement of future meetings and the city manager reports. Who would like to uh, kick off the council member reports? I can certainly go very quickly. Uh, I attended the chamber mixer at Wildcard Brewing. I think it was their ribbon cutting and the San Pablo Avenue design meeting, which was held in these chambers. Okay, um, I was at both of those things and then um, was it the dis discussion um, on race at the uh, Recreation, thank you, Shelley. The Recreation Department hosted. Um, the mayor and I met with Assemblymember Wicks. I held my community leaders meeting last week. We went to the mayor's conference. I attended the Housing Authority for Alameda County, also the Alameda County Disaster Preparedness Fair last Saturday. Um, and today we had a two by two by two and a two by two. And I also really want to call out last night was the um, opening at the um, Community Art Gallery. And a surprise, at least to me, there was a wonderful choral presentation at the beginning of the um, art opening, which was, was really special. And um, it, was, it was really nice. And, and Jen did a great job introducing them and welcoming them. And you all should have been there. It was great. Okay. Thank you. Any reports? I attended the same two meetings that Nick and Peggy attended. In addition, I did, some of us did go to the uh, the opener for the new uh, oh the, the new Rugstraw and Solano, but that actually is Berkeley, so we'll, we'll skip that. Berkeley. <laughs> now, didn't we all, uh, weren't we all at the East Bay Mud uh, thing? Uh, oh, I wasn't. No? Okay. Well, most of us were at the uh, East Bay Municipal Utility District annual presentation. Um, and uh, of course, all the things mentioned, uh, most of them I, I was uh, also at, um, and, and of course, Berkeley, uh, Ruby Ruggs. Additionally, um, 
uh, with Vice Mayor McQuaid, uh, I met with um, Sophie Hahn of Berkeley uh, to discuss a few issues, um, attended a stop waste uh, meeting, attended a, uh, sat in on a climate mayor's uh, conference, conference call of mayors across the country concerned about uh, climate action. Uh, I greeted the East Bay Regional Park District Board at the Albany Beach when they came for a field trip to see the improvements there. Uh, I met with a property owner at Cornices Creek um, who leads a group of people who are concerned about the uh, homeless encampment at the uh, intersection of Cornices Creek and the East Shore Highway. Uh, also, I attended a, um, an event at the Gould Evans uh, firm regarding Senate Bill 50, as did, yes, I did. Um, uh, Nick Pilch and Pete Moss. And uh, city manager report. City staff has been very busy, so I have quite a quite a report for you here, but I'll try and run through it quickly. We are delighted to ha have two sworn in new police officers, one of which is Holly Matthews and another is Dane Walkner. We welcome them to our police department and to our city. Um, Public Works has installed five of the seven water bottle filling stations. We have two remaining, one at Peggy Thompson Pier Street Park and the Community Center. Again, these are funded by Sugar Sweet and Beverage Tax Funds, approved by the voters. The 2018 pavement maintenance and signage project, the work begins this week and will extend through the end of June. The contractor will begin dig outs, basically repairing the base of the road. Uh, followed by sealing, and we are working to expand the scope of this contract to fix a number of potholes throughout the city. Uh, I've personally driven through quite a few of them, and we're doing our best to get these covered up. It's, it's been a really wet winter, and that leads to potholes. Uh, so we're aware of them, and if anyone has an issue with a pothole, please utilize the uh, city's website to to log that location so we can ensure that we can repair that as well. Um, the Memorial Park restroom renovation is underway. It's a five-week project. We're expected to complete that project in mid-May. Uh, the City of Berkeley is doing a sewer rehabilitation project that uniquely runs through streets in Albany. Uh, we're working closely with Berkeley staff to try and minimize impacts to our neighbors as much as possible. But some streets that will be affected include Curtis, Thousand Oaks, Santa Fe, Portland, Canes, Garfield, San Pablo, and Clay. Uh, this work is scheduled to be completed by the end of June. Albany's sewer rehab project is also underway, the contractor is scheduled to start work on a section of Solano Avenue between Curtis and Ramona, uh, Pomona on May 23rd. We realize this is a significant impact to Solano Avenue. However, we're also mandated to ensure our sewer system is as uh, safe as possible to minimize discharges to our waterways. Uh, the Climate Action Committee is holding a study session this Wednesday, April 17th at 6.30 to review draft strategies for the Climate Action and Adaptation Plan. East Bay Community Energy is hosting a community discussion about building electrification and all electric new construction for North County Cities in downtown Berkeley on Wednesday, April 24th at 5.30. Uh, a couple of pictures to reference here. Um, we have a Debunking stereotypes. As part of the 2019-2021 Arts Committee work plan, the community project that was selected is the Debunking Stereotypes mural. This location is at Hillview Pet Hospital, Hospital at 666 San Pablo Avenue. Join us for a discussion on Saturday, April 20th from 5 to 7 p.m. at the Community Center to talk about ideas for this mural. There's a little write-up on it as well.
that's it. Thank you. Um, a question, do you have any update on the park and ride lot underneath the freeway by any chance on the construction? Nothing of substance as of yet. I know the construction is certainly underway and the agencies are working uh, in terms of a use agreement. I think we can certainly follow up with the council with more substance. Thank you. Okay, any final comments before we move to the uh, advisory committee work plans? All right, um, we are on the work plans. May we have a staff report, please? Good evening. Tonight before you are the two-year work plans for two of the advisory bodies. You will be receiving presentation from the Arts Committee and the Parks, Recreation, and Open Space Commission. The rest of the advisory body work plan will be presented over the next few council meetings. Staff recommendation tonight for the council is to review the work plan and provide any comments or direction on the work plans and approve the work plans. And we have the chairs from uh, both the Arts Committee and the um, Park and Parks, Recreation and Open Space Commission here tonight. So we'll have um, Jenny Holland, the chair of um, Arts Committee. Thanks. Hi, my name is Jenny Holland and I'm this year's chair of the Arts Committee. Hi, everybody. Um, did you get the things that we sent ahead for you about the PAPP and the work plan, great. Yes. I'd like to review a couple highlights and then talk about something that we've been thinking that we're really happy to see the city attorney so that we can talk to you about it directly. First of all, we've had a really good couple of years. The Arts Committee is a really nice little committee. I invite you to any meeting, not that you're not busy because it's a pretty impressive list of events that you have attended already in your work as the council members. But it's a great little committee and we work really hard Believing that, you know, safety and traffic, all this stuff is really important, but joy is really important too, and that is our mandate, is to bring some joy to the city in a public space. So we're real happy with things that have happened. Um, the foyer, as um, uh, Vice Mayor McQuaid said, is an ongoing and wonderful thing that happens, and every, every person in Albany who uses the library who goes in this community center can see what's going on in the community center and see the art show that happens there. Another thing that I think has been really wonderful is um, the Fall into Haiku program. Whereas if you notice that every, for the past two autumns, like mushrooms, little haikus have popped out in public spaces and they're it's so charming and they're written by Albany residents. And it's just a magical little scene that happens. And that can, did you wanna, first off, did you have any questions for me? Because I wanna lead that into another area of discussion. I wanna go directly from Fall into Haiku, unless you have some questions you wanna ask me. Okay, we lost, we had to issue our funding for Fall into Haiku, it's not a lot of money, but it's because of the way that the ordinance, the arts ordinance is written. If you look at the city arts ordinance, we are by definition only allowed to use our funds for really um, permanent stable artwork, artwork in that traditional sense of like sculptures, Mur murals, things that don't move. That is, and that's a very traditional way of um, using public funds to increase the beauty of a city. That's the traditional way. We would really like to use, in our, in our work plan, one of our big items in our work plan is to review the ordinance and amend it. We would like to change it. Because other cities around the country have changed their ordinances from static art to what's called placemaking art. We had a, a member of the Arts Committee who sort of schooled us on this, and that's creating environments in which more ephemeral arts can exist. For example, Fall into Haiku can't exist as part of the Arts Committee anymore because it's not permanent uh, visual art. So we would like, we think that Albany has a great opportunity to develop more ephemeral arts, music, drama, dance, poetry. We would like them to be public art, but we need the ordinance to be revised in order to make that happen, in order to use the funds that we have to support those programs. So that's something we would like your approval in, in our work plan. We would like you to say, yeah, go ahead and revise that ordinance. 
I don't know what else to say about it. It's the most important part of our agenda, except I have one more, more thing that's not on our agenda, and I wanted to ask you. It's not in our work plan, um, so I don't even know if I can talk about it, so let me know if I cannot. No, go ahead. Okay, great. You know, our work plan should have included searching and asking you to find another member for the Arts Committee who is a development person, or somebody who can have advise the city on arts development because we would like to, funding is obviously always an issue, and we would like to find alternative methods of funding, not just the um, real estate, the development fund, but to be able to have the city partner with private foundations, et cetera, et cetera. We don't know how to do that. But those things would really help us get a, get a little leg up financially. So. Um, I'm asking you because you you appoint, we serve at your grace, as it were. We need, a, I think we need a development person, or we need a development person who's interested in the arts to help advise us how to do that. And we need, I think sometime down the road, we might come to you and say, can we amend our work plan to start working on development, fiscal development? I know that wasn't on my thing, but that was my aside that I wanted to say to you. I don't know how hard it will be to amend the work plan in the next two years if we want to add that. But. That being said, we're real excited about what's going on, and we hope you are too. We think it reflects real well in our city that people want to come in and see the murals and the art that's happening. All right. Thank you very much. Anything? Great. Thank you. I have some general questions, but maybe should we? Oh, we always have oh. questions. Yeah, I, I do have a question. Yes, please. Um, regarding the sculpture loan program? Yes. Um, can you talk a little bit about what kind of outreach is, has been done on that? Yes, we have lessons learned, right? Lessons learned. Um, cards have gone on to gone out to the residents who live in close proximity to the new sculptures. There are three. We've identified three sites to have temporary sculpture loans, and cards have gone down to residents within, I think, 300 yards. 300 feet of the sculptures, and as you go by, they're all along the, the Loney Greenway, because that was our area of interest. As you go down the Ohlone Greenway, on those three sites, you will see a placard, very much like the Fall into Haiku placards, that says, that has a picture of the, the future, this is the future site of this sculpture. To date, we have heard from three people, two people. One person said, love it. The other person said, get rid of the loop. <laughs> <You know? laughs> we learned a lot from the loop, but I have to say, in something that happened the other day, the loop has been such a controversial item. I, I swim on the Albany Aquatic Masters team, so I'm going past the loop all the time on my way to the pool, and there were 17 kids climbing on the loop, and it was like magic. I mean, it was exactly what you want public art to be. It was interactive, and it was charming, and it was kids, you know? Moment of joy. So we've learned a lot. Thank you. We've learned a lot from that experience, and that's what we've done, Vice Mayor McQuaid. I hope that's sufficient to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Any questions? Um, we have the question to the staff about uh, the art, um, whether the um, arts ordinance is susceptible to amendment. Uh, is that something we can address tonight, or is it something we should uh, come back to on another, uh, on another day? Well, if the council is considering uh, an amendment to the work plan to uh, direct some work uh, towards ordinance amendments, and that's uh, within the scope of the agenda item tonight. Okay. I do need to alert you that there are some state law limitations on the use of money derived from uh, development fees. The legal rationale for that is that they're in lieu of installing art on the development projects. So uh, my opinion is the, the funds, to the extent the funds are derived from those uh, developer fees, they need to be used for some type of physical art as opposed to something like performing arts. So I think that would, if you if you do want to pursue amendments, we'd have to, I just want to alert you that that's a concern in the drafting of those amendments. Thank you, that's really good information and also speaks to the need to develop other forms of funding for public art in Albany. Okay, anything Thank else? Thank you. Other, uh, other questions for the uh, committee chair? Okay, thank you so much. Thank you very much. And there will be time, well, yeah, I yeah. I want to make sure I'm in the right place. Yes, uh, first I wanted to see if there are public comments on this. Uh, Mr. Maris. Uh, 
Alan Maris, Albany resident. Um, really pleased to see so much progress made on the Arts Committee in providing public art in Albany. Um, we have some bulb outs along Solana that could use some public art as well, and this is a good start for trying to get that. Also, concerning the Poet Laureate, uh, Rebecca Black and our former Poet Laureate, um, Christina Hutchins, are going to be reading their poetry at the Edith Stone Room tomorrow night. I think it's um, at 7 o'clock. Thank you. Mr. Beal? Yes, thank you so much. Um, I just I wanted to offer some supporting comments uh, in regard to the idea of an expanded scope. Um, as some of you may know, um, outside my career, I'm involved in the dance. And just recently, last night, I performed at the uh, fourth annual Chi Pao Cultural Celebration in San Francisco. Um, and one of the th reasons I'm interested in the Chi Pao is that it's a dynamic living form of art that moves around. So, and also the dance, that there's um, frustration in the dance community right now about finding facilities and so forth. So I would really love to see some form of effort to bring um, these sort of dynamic forms of art that she's talking about into Albany and to support that, those type of efforts. Um, but then that said, I, I understand the financial uh, aspects. So it would be good if we could had a way to find some sort of funding source uh, in way to, to maybe provide. I, it does overlap into the area of parks and recreation as well. Um, but this is something I would see as very ben beneficial to Albany to have more of, of some of art shows and dance uh, festival type things. And this would also be good for the business development of Albany as well. So thank you. We're f because of the restaurants, re people go to restaurants and we just don't have a lot of that here and people are forced to go down the road into Berkeley and yeah, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Mr. Goodman. Uh, I'm Peter Goodman. I'm currently on the Arts Committee. And I, I just wanted to clarify something about uh, what it says there. The subject of discussion says research, discuss, and update the uh, uh, public art master plan, and then below that, uh, update the art and public places ordinance. And I just wanted to uh, clarify that we don't have a preordained conclusion as to what. Uh, uh, what our conclusion is going to be or what the ordinance is supposed to be, our plan is really to uh, explore what the possibilities are considering legal constraints and what the city hopes for. Our feeling is that the current ordinance and the way things are written are perhaps overly constrained, but we haven't really begun to even talk about what, uh, what the possibilities are. And so part of our discussion would be, of course, finding out what the uh, what the legalities are, besides what our what our own uh, ambitions are. I just want to make that clear. Thank you very much. Any other comments on the uh, draft uh, work plan? Okay, uh, then I'll bring it back to council. Any comments? You have it. I have a couple. Sure. Um, to to go back to the outreach. Um, I would just encourage you to have some flyers that you drop or that, and I'm not suggesting that staff will do this, but community people around where the sculptures are going to be. So we, so we go overboard a little bit in outreach because um, lessons learned, but let's really learn the lessons and let's try to do a little better job on the outreach piece. Um, and the other thing, I don't know if people are aware, but St. Albans Church has just um, created a nonprofit for art and music, and there may be a possibility they are doing some collaboration and they have some space that may work for dance. So that's certainly worth talking to them about. Um, you know, and as far as the update on both the ordinance and the plan, is that something that we could, that Craig could attend one of their meetings and do some, help, help them, the, I don't want them to get too far, you know, to have too high of expectations and then we say, no, you can't do that. 
but I'd rather maybe you were part of the original discussions. I've already had some dialogue with a staff about that. Okay. I mean, that could be handled that way, or if, if it's um, desirable uh, for me to actually attend a meeting, I can do that as well. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, if there are no other comments from council, I'll make a couple of, uh, of quick comments. Um, one is uh, in relation to our um, our strategic plan, there's very little in our strategic plan about the arts, unfortunately, and hopefully there will be more in the future. But to the extent that there is, um, we did put uh, a priority on two things, one being the update of the public art master plan, and uh, the other one being um, uh, in more generally that uh, we, we are encouraging the arts to be uh, part of our economic development. And um, you have the collaborate with the economic development community. I think it kind of fits in there. Although also the sculpture loan. I think that we, our economic development uh, strategic plan for Solano Avenue includes um, a sculpture loan program on Solano to sort of add to the interest. You, when you come to Solano, you might see a different uh, work of art than you saw the time before, and so to encourage that. So um, I, those, those three items, I'd like to just highlight them as, as strategic plan items and therefore uh, particular priorities for the council. As far as... Um, Money raising, uh, you know, we, our, the, the city staff works on grant, generally works on grant um, items that are appropriate for government. Um, but this makes me wonder if we wouldn't benefit from a private effort as well, you know, and uh, I know we have Love the Bulb certainly um, uh, pursues grant opportunities. Perhaps we could think about um, fostering. Uh, it certainly was effective, uh, you know, with the Diverse Housing Working Group, which had been a, t a homeless task force and then evolved into something much more uh, with a much wider range of interests. I'd like to encourage people to give some thought to um, the creation of even a very small arts nonprofit uh, for the rest of Albany, besides the bulb, and uh, think about ways that we can, uh, we might be able to raise more private funds, which helps with public funds. When we're raising private funds, and then we're looking for public funds, it's a great thing to be able to say, you know, we, we want to leverage the money that we've raised. So it's just a suggestion. I'm not going to try to write that into your, uh, into your plan, but I think it is, uh, it is an important issue and we should continue to, to pursue how we get more funding for the arts. So with those suggestions, I'd like, uh, well, let's see. We move to... Um, Procedurally, I guess it, it, to me it makes sense that we would approve this now. Um, and I guess, would, would you be receptive to, to say, pushing those three items, sculpture, um, first of all, the public art master plan, second, the collaboration with the economic develop, development community, and third, the sculpture loan, just push those up because they are strategic plan priorities. And then, um, uh, with just that one change, I would uh, I would move approval of the work plan for the arts committee. Uh, I'll second that. Councilmember Barnes. Yes. Councilmember Pelch. Yes. Vice Mayor McQuay. Yes. Mayor Nason. Yes. And the arts committee work plan is approved. So next we have. Harriet Patterson, Chair of Parks and Parks, Recreation and Open Space Commission. Good evening. I'm Harriet Patterson. I'm Albany resident and chair of the Parks, Recreation and Open Space Commission. And um, we have 
our work plan here that I'll present on behalf of my fellow commissioners and also um, with some great input from staff in helping develop it. So Shelly's here to answer some more detailed questions if, um, if they come up. Just to review a few of the uh, recent accomplishments and initiatives that we've undertaken in the past uh, two years cycle. We reviewed 37 street tree removal applications, um, completed a number of different park projects, including the phase one of Peggy Thompson Pierce Street Park, which opened in March of last year, the Ohlone Greenway and Sidewalk Project, which opened in 2017 in November, the Bus Stop Parklet, which also received a California Parks Recreation um, Annual Award for Outstanding Facility or Park. Um, so that's very exciting, and my kudos to the staff on that work, as well as, um, an award that the city received for the Ohlone Greenway Improvement Project for excellence in park planning and development. So um, kudos all around there as well. Um, the Memorial Park tot lot and patio improvements as well as the bathroom renovation design um, approval and also the construction which we heard about which will be completed in the next few weeks. We hosted a community workshops about the Albany Hill access and trail improvements and then have worked on the project designs which were approved. And Dartmouth tot lot, we also did some, uh, completed some improvements there and installed gender neutral bathroom signs in July of 2017. The Fair Play Act policy was approved by council and we completed a biannual, a biennial review of street tree removal policy as well as uh, created a, reviewed the street tree, um, approved street tree list to help people know which kinds of trees would be good for the various um, street tree locations and then also looked at the Albany Hill vegetation management and hazardous tree removal plans and finally coordinated with the Arts Committee on funding and selection for two Ohlone Greenway public art projects. So those are some of the accomplishments in this past section. We've organized this work plan um, with the strategic plan related items first. So those kind of correspond very directly to the objectives under maximize and improve parks and open space. Um, I'm not gonna go through all of them because I know you've written, seen all the written materials, but we're focusing um, on the objectives as laid out, enhancing parks, enhancing open space, creating cultural facilities and opportunities, and then um, so those items kind of align there. And then we have some other work plan items, some of which are very much underway, but we moved over from the previous work plan just because they're not quite completed yet, which you'll see detailed there, including Memorial Park pathway lighting designs and completing the installation there. Um, reviewing designs and constructing bocce courts at Ocean View Park. Completing analysis um, and of potential dog park locations around Albany, and we'll be presenting the findings back to you all. Reviewing Albany Hill access and trail projects. Uh, which includes bridge and interpretive signage, reviewing park signage and establishing some uniform signage um, programs for Albany Park so that those will look uniform and then also continuing to support the improvements at Peggy Thompson Pierce Street Park and investigating a relocation of the community garden to a less shady location and finally um, preparing mountain bikes a uh, mountain bike skills uh, park proposal to go to Caltrans and reviewing designs and also constructing that park uh, pending those designs. So those are ones that sort of were on our previous work plan that have moved over and then we have some new work plan items. We did a workshop format with our entire commission and did voting. So these ones that are have made the cut here represent the highest priorities of our collaborative group of commissioners. Um, and the top priority group is really providing input into a city master tree plan. So looking at all of Albany and sort of having our Albany Forester give thought to where various types of trees should be planted so that will help everybody have informed decision making when we get to um, periods where we need to replant large groups of trees or even just individual trees. Also looking how we can review and implement previous Memorial Park improvement designs including entry, bike racks and additional seating uh, which was also part of enhancing parks under your strategic plan to look at seating and benches so that everyone can make use of parks. Engaging in the community and looking at the key route boulevard median and what improvements we can do there um, with that space. Establishing a dog park in Albany based on what comes back from the subcommittee and obviously reviewed by council of what the needs are. Um, converting Ocean View tennis courts into pickleball courts, which we had a lot of very, um, 
broad community support for, updating the Park and Recreation Master Plan and also supporting collaboration opportunities with nonprofit organizations on park projects and also programming, which um, is nestled in the strategic plan somewhere uh, as well, but we really wanted to look at how we can better partner across the city. And then in the second priority, which also had a lot of strong support, we had um, working with the urban forester on a tree removal education campaign for homeowners so that when people are new homeowners, they will understand what they need to do in the appropriate permitting to remove or um, adjust trees and also to plant trees so those will meet those needs. Um, pursuing a public bathroom on the Greenway, which you heard me speak about also at the Sugar Sweetened Beverage Workshop, but that's an interest and in, um, a priority for the commission. Reviewing um, previous senior center expansion plans and project designs and investigating funding opportunities for this really important and growing um, population in our city and a, a center that provides so much programming in such a small space. Um, so how can we kind of expand that and build on what's already been done, developing a monarch habitat assessment, supporting and reviewing designs for non-traditional parks, so parklets like our bus stop parklet, but also other pocket parks around the city, converting terrace parks five through 12 playground from sand to fiber, and um, engaging the community in the selection of a new playground feature. And then finally, we have just our ongoing tasks at hand, which is reviewing all street tree removal applications, a biannual review of AB 2404, um, biennial review of the street tree removal policy, receiving any presentations about waterfront uh, related items, which wasn't in the strategic plan, but we know that's an important and um, increasingly important area to focus on. And then also continuing to support the implement implementation of the Albany Hill Creekside Park Master Plan and receiving biannual park maintenance reports. So that's our proposed work plan and um, we're happy to take any questions. Are there any questions from the council? Go ahead. I just have three quick ones. Where would this uh, mountain bike park be? It uh, is proposed to be underneath the freeway on the other side from the park and ride sort of uh, along that section. So that's what we were exploring with Caltrans. Down Cleveland. It's just sort of adjacent to that part over there, but on Cleveland. Okay. And so it's, uh, we, saw, we saw some beginning designs, but it was like um, for them to be able to practice their tricks and very popular for like the high school mountain bike team, but also for others in the area that want to be able to do that mm -hmm. type of recreation. Trees, 37 tree permits. How many of them were actually removed of the 37? I would. I don't have that statistic. I would venture a guess that uh, a fair number of them were because we have a fairly structured uh, process by which the forester makes very clear recommendations. We do see whether it's an emergency tree removal or not, and most of the ones that come before us have met a series of requirements by the time they're coming to the commission. So, I would say. If I were ballparking it, I would say about two thirds at least of the ones that come before us have been removed, but usually it's because it's a very diseased or a, a tree that represents a danger to the community because it might fall or has parts of it have fallen. Mm -hmm. Okay. And on pickleball courts, I have a neighbor who's a big pickleball fan. So I just want to clarify, you change the striping and in some cases you change a net but you can still go back and forth between tennis and pickleball on the same courts? It's possible, but it's not ideal for the pickleballers. And we heard a long presentation and there was a long discussion about that. It can actually fit, I believe, four to six pickleball courts in this existing footprint of the tennis courts. And because there are no other pickleball courts in Albany or um, really close by to Albany, it represents an opportunity for the large number of seniors that gather each, or, and anyone can join pickleball, but there's a large number of seniors that are very avid fans that play uh, regularly, and there aren't enough capacity, there isn't enough capacity for them to do so. So because the netting is actually a slightly different height, and there are slightly different dimensions, it's actually better to have courts that are set aside to be pickleball courts rather than trying to convert them back and forth. So that's the reason why it would be a more um, permanent conversion as opposed to just having people play pickleball on tennis courts, which is what it has been up to now. Okay, thanks. Okay, other questions? Vice Mayor McQuaid, any questions? I've got comments, no? But no questions this okay, time. well then, um, do we have any public uh, comments on the uh, parks, recreation, and open space uh, work plan?
Albany Parks, I'm Susan Schwartz again. Albany Parks are wonderful, but I had not realized quite how wonderful. I, I apologize that I'm here to complain. As you will recall, not really, um, after months of effort, um, $450,000 that had been forgotten was relocated from a maintenance fund for Cotonesis Creek. Uh, and something of the responsibility for this, at least a public meeting, um, is to be within the newly renamed Parks Recreation and Open Space Commission. I believe that is in the city's strategic plan. It is not in the park strategic plan, and I'm not here to criticize all the work they did. This is new. I just, we just would like it to be within a reasonable time um, amended or whatever, it, whatever happens so that within the next two years, this is a two-year plan, there be a recognition that Cotonesis Creek now, at least there will be a public meeting, an opportunity for stakeholders within the Parks, Recreation, and Open Space Commission, which is your strategic plan. And why do we care about that? We need maintenance done. The brush that we cut is still there, killing the grass. The graffiti has, that was reported in January has not been removed. And Public Works does a great job, and everybody is overworked. But somehow, we have to get it into the system that there is this money there. It doesn't really even have to take city staff. Uh, but that, that this work needs to be done. We've had four work parties in the past, it, since March. We have three more scheduled, and our small groups are working there quite often. It'll be there tomorrow. As we do more, we realize how much more there is to done. We cannot do everything. So this just needs to get into the system, integrated, and become part of the city. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, sir, I don't know your name, but come on up. Hi, my name is Philip Moss, Albany Residence. I just want to clarify a couple of things for uh, Council Member Barnes. What we presented at the park and rec for the pickleball courts was within a mile and a half radius of Albany, there are 19 dedicated tennis courts and exactly zero pickleball courts. We have to travel to either Vallejo for dedicated courts or the far end of Alameda to play, so or Walnut Creek and Concord. So that's why we're asking on a, on a Sunday, we'll pack the Albany gym with 40, 50, sometimes as much as 60 players squeezed onto eight courts. Um, if we can get those courts dedicated pickleball courts at uh, Ocean View, we can get up, to, um, we believe, eight courts, which will allow the pickleball, the Albany pickleball group to hold tournaments there and bring more people into Albany. So that's why we, and it's the most inexpensive way we can convert and get pickleball courts in the city of Albany is just to convert those courts. Um, and that's why we asked, and uh, the chair did an excellent job of presenting it, and the staff has been wonderful to work with and open discussions, and so we appreciate that, and we appreciate the council's time in this. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Patterson? Chair Patterson. Sorry, I just wanted to mention that I didn't go through all the strategic plan initiatives, but we do have annually review CIP and maintenance projects on creeks listed there. Yeah. So in the more detailed list that is there, and we do absolutely want to make sure that that's a part of our um, work plan and focus of our commission. Thank you. Mr. Beal. No, it's still the same item, but I just wanted to uh, mention something about the sport of pickleball. I actually played it uh, one time uh, a couple months ago. A very good friend of mine begged me to come, well, didn't really beg me, but she carried on about the, the joy of it. And uh, I managed to uh, actually interview one of the people uh, involved in pickleball. This was in San Francisco. 
And uh, one of the things that he said about pickleball was that anyone can play it, that any people of all ages and all ethnic groups, and they come together, that um, you know, t uh, teenagers can play their grandparents, and it's a great social sport. So I'm glad to see. I haven't actually played in Albany because of the s different schedule items that I have, but I, I would speak highly of this idea of having dedicated pickleball port, um, courts in Albany. Um, where we were in San Francisco, a group of people had actually come out at 3 a.m. and repainted a tennis ball court. And it was an unused tennis <laughs> ball court in the southern end of San Francisco. They came out in the middle of the night, repainted it, and the city eventually okayed the idea after, so it was easier to ask forgiveness than to ask permission. So thank you. Thank you. Any other public comments? Okay, then I'll bring it back to the council. Do we have comments? Uh, sure. Um, so just a few comments. Uh, yes, uh, quite a uh, large uh, number of items here on your work plan. Um, I think given that there's a large number of items, of items and that a number of them carried over, uh, I applaud the, you prioritizing the new work plan items and you may want to also do a prioritization effort on uh, the combination of the new and the old work plan items so that we, um, uh, so that we don't have more and more carrying over year after year. I don't, I don't know that that's the case, but I mean, a prioritization is, uh, is important. And if I can add my, uh, uh, my priority views, um, that would be to uh, underline as well the annual review of the CIP and maintenance projects on the creeks so that we don't forget that um, money and we don't forget to do the maintenance and have a public hearing about the maintenance and, and how that's done and the, and the efforts of volunteers. Um, and the other things that I would highlight is I'm very happy to see the uh, master tree plan here. Um, and given that um, we have, have to, uh, we have to approve a number of um, removals of older trees, um, that's, you know, that's, that's life, that's the life of trees. They're going to get old and, and get diseased and they have to be removed, but so important, it's so important to replant them and to have a robust um, uh, project, a uh, robust program for um, replanting and to know, know what to replant where uh, and, and when. And so I, I, I would put those two items um, high on my priority list, frankly. And thank you very much for the presentation. Thank you. Okay. Um, so since we're doing pickleball and bocce at Ocean View, I'd also like to suggest that you include the um, permanent cement ping pong table. I think, Shelley, that I, I sent you something about that. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I think Ocean View is a great potential for these sort of different things for people to do that are all exciting and relatively inexpensive and a good thing for the community. So I'd like to see you look at that. Um, on your ongoing, you, you talk about presentations on waterfront-related items. I think it's because waterfront and the hill and the creek are all kind of new to this committee as the open space piece. And maybe just adding creeks to that line would, um, would help sort of as a reminder that creeks are part of what you're looking at now. And I, I like your prioritization. I would like you to move the pursue public bathrooms on the Ohlone Greenway to priority one. Um, Enough said about that. That's it for me. Okay. Um, comments, Council Member Barnes? Okay. Uh, could I just add one? Yeah. I, I forgot. I apologize. Um, you, there is a mention of uh, public bathrooms along the Ohlone Greenway. You may want to look further on in the agenda where there's also a discussion of a public bathroom for another purpose or, or for another public bathroom. Um, a purpose. Uh, yeah, I, I guess they're all for the same purpose. Uh, true enough, good point. Um, but anyway, there's the, uh, another suggested project where we might use funding for uh, a public restroom. So um, you might want to look at that uh, agenda item. Thank you. Thank you. I guess my only comment is that uh, 
I'm just so impressed at the work that our committees are doing. Uh, I think both the Arts Committee and the Parks, Recreation, and Open Space Committees have set themselves very ambitious and very constructive uh, agendas, and it's much appreciated, and, uh, and the staff support that these committees get is much appreciated. Can I say one more thing? Yep. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to add on to that. Um, Chair Patterson, I've watched you a couple of times, and I think you do a fabulous job running your meetings, so thank you. Thank you. Okay. Would anyone like to make a motion? Uh, I'll move approval of the uh, Parks, Recreation, Open Space Commission um, um, work plan for 2019 to 2021. I'll second that. Councilmember Barnes? Yes. Councilmember Pilch? Yes. Vice Mayor McQuaid? Yes. Mayor Nason? Yes. And the work plan's approved. Thank you all again. So um, we are up to our quarterly financial update. You got to do all the fun stuff. Now you get to learn that you get to hear about the numbers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that make it all the rest possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think it's fun, but. <laughs> all right. So I provided the update for, yeah, either way. I provided the update for through the end of the third quarter, um, and again, we are on a fiscal year, so the end of the third quarter was the end of March. And in the staff report this time, I put a chart that basically shows you what we expended year to date in 2017, 2018, and 2019, and as you'll see, it's obviously a little higher, but the growth is not as great as it was from 17 to 18, so that's that's nice. Um, the revenue looks to be down, but I think that has to do with some transfers that, you know, have yet to be made. So we, when I do look at everything overall, the revenue does seem to be where it should. Um, another chart that I included later on in the staff report was for property tax revenue to show you when we kind of get that revenue. So as you'll see, we get approximately, you know, 40% of our property tax revenue, which is a lot of of our revenue in the fourth quarter. So we just haven't gotten that yet. Um, so nothing stands out as abnormal when you look at both expenses and revenue. Everything seems to be on track. Um, there are certain things, like you'll see the finance department is a little ahead, um, and that has to do with some of the temporary staffing that we had, and now that that's stopped, that those expenses obviously won't continue. Um, and there are certain things, like we talk about every time, that are front-loaded, like insurance. So if you look at risk management, it looks like it's almost most spent, well, that's because we won't spend anything else. Um, so I don't see any issues, everything seems to be on track. I also included a paragraph at the end about the finance department and what we're doing. Um, we are up to date on all our journal entries and our main bank account reconciliation. We have started working, as we talked about earlier, with Mays and Associates on making sure that our opening balances are correct. Um, they are actively working on piecing some stuff back together, and we're on track for that. And then, yeah, all our state controllers reports are in. There's one due at the end of the month that I'm actively working on. And we have put together, we've taken from some other departments in other cities and, you know, gotten checklists and everything to see what other people are doing to kind of make sure that we have our own best practices in place. And we've done an audit checklist that includes all the state controller's office reports. And then we've also created a calendar that's color-coded and it's in Excel and it's great um, with what 
everyone's responsibilities are in the department, uh, when those things are due, their monthly tasks, their quarterly things, you know, all the reports that they have to do so that we can make sure that everyone stays on top. And if there is turnover in the future, we're not dropping anything. So that's it. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, any questions for Ms. Rowden? No. Okay. Uh, oh. Any public comment? Well, um, I had a question. So just spend two minutes walking me through fiscal close, when that's going to happen, when it's done. Sure. Are you going to tie that into the CAFR process? Yep. So being on top of our bank reconciliations is really the main thing. Uh, it basically makes sure that we kind of close every month so we're on top of it. Um, there will be a handful of items that stay open through July and August for receivables. Um, it's revenue that we earned in this fiscal year, but we didn't actually take receipt of until, you know, in the future. And then at the same time, we'll also be looking at expenses that we made. And a perfect example is uh, recreation. They're already starting to prepare for the 4th of July celebration. Well, that's obviously in next fiscal year, but they have to make those expenses this year. So we have to keep track of expenses that were made in this year that are really for next year. And so we have to make those journal entries. And so it's really just walking through all of that. You'll get another fourth quarter report that all of the department heads will look at and they'll go through and say, hey, you know, that doesn't make sense. It should have been in this year. Um, as part of the audit process, what happens kind of before that fiscal close is the auditors will reach out to us and say, hey, what are your processes? Have you changed any procedures? Have you implemented any new policies? Things like that. So that it's it's not anything that looks at the actual numbers. It looks at how we do our actual job. And then, yeah. So fiscal close is done by September? Is there a, yes, a it deadline? should be. And then at that point, you've been working with the auditors who are going to produce the CAFR. Correct. And the CAFR, we're expecting to see when? Um, the... Financials should be completed by the end of December, and then you would get a report from the auditor January, you know, depending on schedules. But the draft financials would be done by December. Okay, and the January time frame is what is typical and expected yes. for cities? Yep. Okay. That will be new for us. We're, I'm fingers crossed, right? <laughs> okay. Thank you. Can I just say something? Uh, yes, oh, well, we didn't, I didn't ask for comments, so people may have comments. Go ahead. I just, looking at this and looking at where we are now and where we've been in the past, I just want to say thank you to you and all the staff in your department. It's, it's so good to see something that says, you know, we're up to date on all, all journal entries. I'm like, yes. <laughs> thank you for all your work. And, and Isabel, I know you were a big part of this, so thank you also. Yes, I do have very good staff, so. Keep them. Definitely. Yes, <laughs> yes. And I wanted to point out, we do have the Shaven Associates information in our, in our packet. Yes. Showing the critical path to reach uh, December 15th uh, mm -hmm. uh, completion date because we do have reports due to the Alameda County Transportation Committee uh, December 31st. And although some cities do miss those deadlines, we hope to avoid missing them this year, yes. if we possibly can. Um, and mostly, I just want to say thank you. What you talk about administration is just music to my ears, especially reaching out to other cities, seeing what they do, having clear uh, division of duties and clear deadlines for everyone is, is just tremendous. Thank you. Other? OK, thank you. And we move forward. To um, let's see, we do not have any public hearings tonight, so we go to unfinished business, item ten one, 
California Homeless Coordinating and Financing Council proposed activities for inclusion in contract with Alameda County. May we have a staff report, please? Uh, so on uh, March 18, uh, staff uh, came to council uh, and provided a, a presentation regarding uh, potential existing programs that could be augmented with the use of um, HEAP funds, including uh, housing subsidies, uh, homelessness prevention, flexible housing subsidies funds, homeless encampment cleanups, and a possible one-time expenditure for the purchase of an auto cleaning public toilet. Uh, as a reminder, the funds need to be expended fairly quickly, um, with 50% uh, of the funds uh, having to be committed by uh, January 2020, and all funds being expended by uh, uh, June 2021. Uh, with that in mind, um, there is a, a consensus within the within the region to spend the funds um, on existing programs and expenditures that uh, can can move quickly. So the council um, received this information and expressed an interest in util utilizing some of the funding uh, for um, uh, prevention activities to prevent homelessness and to keep people housed and also uh, for encampment cleanups. Uh, also, the council requested additional information on costs associated with the auto, cell, uh, auto cleaning toilet. Um, as part of your action, you also referred the matter to the Social and Economic Justice Commission for further input. And at their meeting on April 2nd, uh, the SEJC considered the use of HEAP funds and recommended that the funds be used to support um, Albany Project Hope with housing subsidies, landlord uh, incentives, and um, homeless prevention, and that further research be done on the possibility of using a portion of the HEAP funds for a public toilet. So based on the direction received uh, by the council, the recommendations received by the SCJC and staff's discussion with representatives from um, Berkeley Food and Housing Project, which is the agency that um, uh, is assisting us with Albany Project Hope, the following, uh, we've, we're proposing two options um, for the council's consideration. Uh, the primary difference between the two options is whether um, the council would like to continue moving forward with including including the purchase of a public restroom uh, unit uh, or focus the utilization of the funding specifically on the areas of housing subsidies and homeless prevention. Um, we've gotten a little bit more information on the public restrooms. Um, so the, the cost of the actual restroom is uh, approximately $140,000. Uh, our public works Department has scoped out, scoped out some locations and done some preliminary uh, cost detail analysis of the uh, for the installation and the site preparation, and the cost would costs would range between you know one hundred and eighty thousand dollars to one hundred and sixty thousand dollars depending on location and what's needed. Uh, there's definitely more research needing to be done uh, for. Um, for that project. And again, because the, pro um, the funds need to be spent pretty quickly, um, this would mean for our public works department that there would need to be a reshuffling of priorities uh, should council want to move forward with the restroom. And funding would need to be um, identified for the site preparation and, and um, the additional costs above uh, the $140,000, unless you decide you want to spend most of the HEAP funds on the public restrooms. So um, the staff recommendation is to authorize uh, the city manager to enter into an agreement with the county of Alameda for the expenditure of homeless emergency aid grant funds in the amount of 338234 and uh, select one of the two expenditure plans proposed or you know, you can also modify it. But the key I here is the, um, for the city to be able to move forward with a um, uh, entering into a contract with uh, the county for the expenditure of the funds. Um, and then in talking with the county, we can, there's some specific service ca categories that uh, activities that the, the contract will uh, be, uh, that the funding will go into. Um, and amendments can be made, but they would prefer that we don't amend <laughs> so so I'm um, this is this concludes my 
report. I'm happy to take any questions and provide further information. Are there questions from the council? I just have one. Just one? Letter rep. Um, the incentive program for landlords. Can you talk a little bit about what that looks like? Is there is that just run through Berkeley Food and Housing? Is there staff involvement? Uh, no, it would be, be run by Berkeley Food and Housing Project, and it would be the incentive programs for um, landlords would be uh, like a signing bonus when they decide to uh, when they agree to sign uh, sign in a lease with some with somebody who has uh, is experiencing homelessness, or also uh, it could be um, adding to the security deposit, so to give some assurance to the landlord that if uh, that damage would be done to the property that they'd have enough funding to cover those costs. So those are the types of incentives uh, that, ha that are being implemented at this time. Is that something that they're doing now or is that, would that be an additional program sort of? They're not doing it as part of Albany Project Hope at okay. this time, no. We have no funding for that purpose. Other questions? Uh, yeah, um, I apologize that, um, that I missed this, but um, I got the um, the figure for the purchase of the public toilet. Did you give figures for installation and ongoing maintenance as well? Yeah, uh, ongoing maintenance um, would be, we still have to uh, figure that out, but based on preliminary um, data, it would be around 10,000 a year, okay. uh, maybe more. We, we just Is that a, a contract with the company, something like that? Or? Yes, it would okay. be part of our janitorial contract. We would add the rest, the new unit uh, as part of, like they service our park restrooms, they would now we would now add oh. that location. Oh, okay, because mm -hmm. the other model is that there are, like the ones in San Francisco, there's a contract with a company that is also responsible for the maintenance of that. No, no. not in this case. Yeah, okay. Mm -mm. Um, and uh, and uh, you don't have a, you, you've scoped out some preliminary locations, but you don't have a list of the, those locations for us? Yeah. Well, they're on the Ohlone Greenway well, near Solano Avenue, near the business district mm -hmm. on the Greenway. Okay. Uh, so near that intersection, different areas around that inter intersection of Solano and uh, the Ohlone Greenway. Okay. And mm -hmm. then uh, did you give a, um, a figure for installation as well? Well, the overall costs associated with um, installation, yeah, installation, okay. uh, right. basically trenches, utility hookups, it oh. ranges between 180 to 260. I see. In addition to the cost of the toilet. Oh, in addition. Okay. Yes. Got it. So okay. You, we're looking at overall costs of over 300,000, even over 400, if depending on locations and. But those are again very uh, preliminary okay. um, you know we would if we if you decide to move forward with the restroom I think one of the potential one of the things we'd have to do a lot of is outreach you know for for site for citing that the, the restroom the unit itself on the right. Ohlone Greenway right. okay where would it go okay and that right. would be a big uh, you know uh, it would take a, a little while yeah, yeah. <laughs> to do okay. mm -hmm. thank you mm -hmm. okay other questions well, to follow up on the next question, so I'm looking at the option two budget here. 140,000 out of the heap monies, 180 to 260 for installation, 10,000 ongoing. And would this toilet be like one of those fancy French ones in San Francisco that are self-cleaning? Would they have timers on the doors? Yes. So the unit proposed is a self-cleaning toilet that um, after a number of usage closes up for a certain amount of time and self-cleans. Um, and, and then there's a, also a timing uh, uh, component which uh, doesn't allow someone to stay in there more than 10 minutes. The doors open uh, automatically after, after 10, 10 minutes. minutes. So it should be something that everyone in town would be comfortable using. You know, yes. You're yeah, not the, gonna, it would be a public restroom. It would, it would be a public restroom on the Ohlone Greenway or near the Ohlone Greenway um, to accommodate. And it would be open district. 24 hours a day? It could be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And did we cost out the option of 
keeping the Memorial Park toilets open 24 hours a day. I mean, that would be an obvious alternative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, we haven't done that. Because that, well, that would basically almost, mm, I'm not sure how feasible that would be, but that's something to think about. But we need to decide this tonight, correct? Mm -hmm. Because of the timing of the grant? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, okay, thanks. Okay, um, any public comment? Hi, Alan Maris, Albany resident, um, a member of uh, Community Access to Resources. Um, and we um, <clears throat> have a number of people come in looking for housing. And it's barely available. What's available is very expensive. If we want to get people out of their cars, out of their tents on the streets, we're going to have to look at significant subsidies for each person that we're trying to get off the street. Um, until we get our affordable housing project. The affordable housing projects available to us now have long waiting lists. Um, so I would lean towards uh, giving a bit more money to the subsidies. And I would suggest also that maybe um, while you're determining if this uh, public toilet works, that you put in less expensive public what do you call them? Porta potties? Probably less expensive. Try them for several months and see if they work. Um, will the toilet have running water? Uh, yes, it would be connected to water, power, and sewer. Sewer, mm -hmm. it would. Mm -hmm. That's probably worth it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But just to see if it works, um, consider trying porta potties for a few months um, before the money runs out. Um, enough time to give you a chance to see if um, the public toilet's gonna work. And if it doesn't, then give more money to housing subsidies. Um, we have a significant number of people and that's not nearly enough to cover the subsidies for the people who are living on the streets. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, bring it back to the council. Any final comments? Um, go ahead. Yeah, so um, I love the idea of having a public toilet, but uh, the, they've been plagued with uh, issues. Uh, I, was, I think I might have been living in San Francisco when they installed San Francisco's public toilets, and those are run by a company, J.C. De Disco or Deco, um, and they receive decidedly mixed reviews, and they're often out of, often um, a haven for people to lock themselves in for a little while. Um, and uh, in any case, I think we ought to think long and hard before we do that. I just a, I did a very quick web search and found an excellent article um, about Portland's public toilets that seemed to have a great deal of success. So, uh, bottom line, I think if we're going to do that. The, uh, we need to examine how that's rolled out, how that has worked in other cities as much as possible. I think that's, it's very easy to do that badly. Um, on the other hand, I had the same thought as Mr. Maris that um, perhaps a, a porta potty, which is, can be a couple hundred dollars a month to service, uh, might be a great idea. Um, and I passed one in Berkeley. Um, and some, someone who's doing a house renovation project had put one out, but had also put a nice screening around it so that it, it didn't look, it wasn't just the loud plastic porta potty, it was, it was a ple uh, pleasant structure to look at. So that might be another way to go. Um, but I th so I think this, this it, it could end up. I, I don't know which one way or another whether we need this or we want to spend all the uh, the heap money um, on on other things besides the toilet. But I think it's just it's important to get the toilet thing right if we go that route. And that's all I have to say at the at the moment. Thank you. Um, yeah, I I think that we really need to explore this whole bathroom idea and give it up as a as a heap project, which I. You know, I originally thought that was a good use for the funds. I, I don't think it is now. I think we need to do more research and, and know exactly what we're getting and what we're expecting. Um, and uh, park and open space 
has it on their work plan, so it's mm -hmm. not like it's getting away from us. I just think it needs to come out of this particular pot of money. Um, I'd like to, I kind of like to have a hybrid of these two options, actually. I'd like to take out the encampment cleanup, but I do want to be sure that whoever is doing any kind of hazardous material cleanup has the training and equipment that they need. And I'm, I'm assuming that we do train and equip our uh, maintenance department, but I just wanted to make that comment. You know, I think what's really critical to the overall issue of um, housing and lack of housing is keeping people housed. And it's cheaper to keep people housed than it is to get them housed. So I'd like to see us put that as one of our, as a primary goal that we're trying to keep people housed. And I, and I don't want to think about dollars particularly, but just to sort of a philosophy that that's important to us. Um, and then, but on the other hand, you know, as we're spending this money, I do support subsidies for the new, newly housed people, including like the move-in costs and on some of those things that we haven't really thought about. Uh, some of the smaller items that came up at um, the SCJC meeting, I think, can be provided by local a local nonprofit, and we've kind of talked about that. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, I think we want to give Berkeley Food and Housing an idea of what we're trying to do, but I don't know that we need to give them an exact dollar amount per item, whether it's housing subsidies or keeping people housed. It's it's all part of the same goal, I think. Um, and if you know. The last thing is if they feel there's a real need for the incentive program for landlords, you know, that's fine too. If that's, you know, something I hadn't really thought about, but if that seems to be critical to them, then that's, that's fine. Yeah. Quick question. How much money are we spending now on post bulb, on uh, encampment cleanup? Uh, accor we, according to our public works department, uh, the, they do between six and ten encampments yearly. They clean up six and ten, um, and the cost varies depending on the size and the amount of things to clean up. But they estimated between, I think it was like ten thousand dollars per cleanup around there. Yeah. So they could easily spend the seventy-five thousand dollars. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. mm, okay. Yeah, and I, I have a comment on that, which is simply that um, uh, we have been hearing from the Blue Glove crew folks who are out cleaning up that there's uh, a, um, they're finding a lot of human feces at um, mostly at bus stops, I guess, and then uh, also um, soiled adult diapers left on the street, and. I don't think we should be relying on, on citizen volunteers to pick that up, much less, you know, use needles. So I would like to see us picking that up, and I don't think it, it should come out of either parks or, or um, business beautification funds, you know, those are, those funds are also extremely scarce, and this is, in effect, a social service issue, mm -hmm. to, to my mind. So to me, it seems appropriate to put that funding into encampment cleanup uh, and cleanup of, of street detritus um, that is, is believed to be uh, associated with, uh, with homelessness. So I, I support keeping that in there. Um, and otherwise, generally, I, I agree with what everyone has said about auto cleaning single toilets. I'm afraid that the unit would be, it would be the least expensive component uh, when we start looking at all of the other siting, construction, and then OI maintenance. That, that's going to be tough. So I do agree we need to look more deeply into that issue, but that it's not. Uh, a use for that, uh, for this funding. So do I hear a, uh, do I hear a motion for one of these options or an amended option? Well, maybe I get a clarification first. You know, option one as presented looks pretty good, but just how hard and firm do we expect Berkeley Food and Housing Project to have to <clears throat> conform to those guidelines. 
And these aren't really hard budget targets for them, are they? Or are they? Uh, no, I think that um, I think the more flexibility we give them, in a sense, for the use of the funding between housing subsidies and prevention, that's probably better for them because then when somebody comes to them or even to Albany Cares and says, I'm late on my rent for three, you know, for the last three months, I've gotten my eviction notice, then they can, you know, the funds can be used to um, house people. But we just don't know how many people are going to come to us for prevention. And we know right now that we have four to five people who have done housing assessments and are currently homeless and have done housing assessments, and BFHB is in the process of helping them find housing. So, um, you know, it just depends. Each case is different. It just depends how much, the subs how much of the subsidy is needed. So I think the more flexibility we give them, and we can build that into the contract with them as far as, um, you know, there would be a, a pot of money for... Um, from HEAP funds as part of the contract with BFHP, and it would be for housing subsidies and prevention, and then there could be another part of money for um, landlord incentives, because that's a very spe another a very specific um, program, and, um, and then another part of money for some flexible housing subsidy for moving costs. Um, and then as far as the contract with the county, then there's a, uh, those monies would be divided between the different activities. So there's services, which, in, which includes the subsidies, uh, which includes prevention, and then the rental assistance and subsidies would be another part. So that's more what we have to uh, uh, set tonight is those, the pots of money for each of the activities that will be incorporated in the contract with the county, because then that goes to the state. And once that's put into place, then um, we uh, we can amend, but they prefer that we don't. Yeah. So it looks like, based on what I'm hearing, is that we would set the, the heap funding would go, as far as the co county contract would be, would go in between services and rental assistance, and the 2.5 percent to administration. And then we would divide that with BFHB accordingly, um, pr according to the programs. So are you leaving in the encampment cleanup? Uh, yes, but that would be a separate, that would be for the city. So we right. wouldn't partner uh, with that, and that would be under services. You know, I think this, philosophically to me, this money is, should be used as, as close to the, the people as possible. Um, you know, and I, I understand the, the cleanup is a, a piece of this, but that's $75,000 in, in this much money is a, is a high percentage of it. It's higher than any of the other totals, with the exception of the housing subsidies. You know, I'd like to, if we took it out, we're already paying that, right? I mean, that's somewhere budgeted in, in our city budget, right? But it's currently being done by our public works department. And that's yes. how it would be done anyway, mm -hmm. right? If we... Uh, no, the, 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 the... Oh, you would contract it out. Yes, contract out for the biohazards, handling of bio, biohazards. Um, and other cities are using, are, uh, using contractors to uh, clean up encampments with biohazards also. Um, and it's important to realize this is a new, we are seeing something that we haven't seen a lot of previously, the, the piles of human feces mm -hmm. and the used adult diapers. Um, and I personally have noticed more needles than I used to see. I don't know uh, why that would be, but I've I've noticed that as well. Just it seems to me it's a high percentage not going to services that that, con that concerns me, and I think I heard that in the discussion from SCJC also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, no, SCJC did not favor uh, encampment cleanups. Um, Is there a way I mean, option two, you know, we've decreased it to fifty thousand in option two. Um, you know. That could be done for option one, and then the $25,000 could go to um, services or housing subsidies. If, if, the, if the amount is, feels too high, but the, the service still right. wants to, you know, that, if council wants to. That seems like a fairly good compromise in my yeah. mind. Okay. Works for me. So transfer $25,000 to, um, in 
the second item, increase housing prevention activities to keep people who are at risk of losing the house housed, that item? That would be fine. And again, we're giving them some flexibility. Is that mm -hmm. yes. right? So that would be fine. Do we have a motion? So uh, I move that the council adopt a resolution 2019-28 authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement with the county of Alameda for the expenditure of homeless emergency aid program grant funds in the amount of $338,234 and select option one with a slight adjustment moving $25,000 from encampment cleanup to um, assistance for people who are at risk of losing their housing. I'll second that. Council Member Barnes? Yes. Council Member Pilch? Yes. Vice Mayor McQuay? Yes. Mayor Nason? Yes. And the motion carries. Thank you very much. Um, we have no new business. So we are at uh, other business and announcement of events and future agenda items. Does anyone want to make any announcements regarding uh, future agenda items or uh, events? All right, then we go to our adjournment. Um, we are adjourning tonight in memory of Guillermo Robles, who was known to us all, I think, as, uh, as Memo Robles. Um, he was a member of the Solano Avenue Association and passed away from complications due to cancer. He was 68 years old. He was the owner of Casa Oaxaca, a small business on Solano Avenue in Albany. He founded it in 2004 with a great desire to bring the art he loved and admired from his hometown in Oaxaca City, Mexico to the Bay Area. Memo was a hardworking, kind man with a wonderful sense of humor who was immensely loved by his friends, family, and customers. A first-generation immigrant, Memo came to the U.S. from Mexico when he was just 17 years old, learned English, worked hard, and eventually helped bring his siblings and parents to the U.S. so that they could have a better opportunity to start a new life. Before opening Casa Oaxaca, Memo was a police officer in the city of Berkeley for 21 years. During his time with that department, he served in many different capacities and became a highly respected officer. His work included working as a training officer, mentoring many young policemen and women who still work to the, with the police department to this day. For many years, he worked in partnership with the Drug Enforcement Agency doing undercover work. He also worked with the hostage negotiation team. In 2001, he retired after a serious injury, but it wasn't long before he started his next venture and opened his business, Casa Oaxaca, here in Albany. He was a loving family man and a wonderful father to his only child, his daughter Rebecca. Memo loved being a member of the Solano Avenue Association and the greater Albany community. He enjoyed getting up every day and providing his customers with the best possible service. His legacy lives on in not only the small business he founded and operated, but in all of the people with whom he got to know and love over the years. Never the one to be interested in taking a break. Rest assured that Memo's spirit will continue to attend every single Solano Avenue Association meeting, and of course be a part of the Solano Stroll, which he looked forward to every year. Memo's spirit lives on, reminding us to work hard, but to do it with a smile and a laugh. So let's take a moment to remember Memo. And with that, we are adjourned. <laughs>